Hello. In this edition of In My View, we would be talking about the farmers' protests which have gone absolutely wrong in Delhi on the 26th of January 2021. And this is like touching base as far as this topic is concerned for a simple reason because in subsequent editions, there would be occasions when one, when one would be talking about uh, the whole plethora of issues which are related to these protests about the problems related to agriculture uh, as far as countries like India are concerned about our laws of the time which have been presently protested against the right way of dealing with the sort of crises that plague agriculture, not just in India, but across the world and so on and so forth. So in subsequent editions, one would always get the occasion uh, to talk about these issues. One is especially uh, waiting for the budget to be presented, the union budget for 2021-22 to be presented so that one can look at uh, the provisions of the budget, especially those which relate to farming. Uh, and try to make sense of uh, the ways in which the government intends to change um, the, the whole scenario as far as farming in India itself is concerned. Um, the protests which happened uh, in Delhi and, and, and took uh, unfortunate and uh, un uncalled for untoward sort of turn yesterday um have have been going on for almost the last two months so yesterday was supposed to be exactly speaking the 61st day of these protests um most of the farmers who have been protesting are from different parts of north india uh so you have farmers from uh, punjab from haryana from uh, western uttar pradesh from parts of eastern and northeastern rajasthan who have joined in these protests and uh, farmers from other parts of India are eager to join in, but on account of a number of logistical problems and the way in which uh, the entry and exit points towards Delhi have been managed by uh, the union government, have not been able to make their presence felt or have not been able to join in these protests. Though in small batches, uh, farmers from uh, practically all parts of India were a part of whatever happened in Delhi yesterday. Um, the, the protests have been against these three farm laws which have been legislated by the union government uh, in the union parliament in a manner which is definitely, at least on the face of it, uh, not something that can be called as due process or constitutional. And that exactly is the problem which has been um, uh, sort of sorted out in the Supreme Court of India. Uh, as to does the union government actually have the authority, uh, does the union parliament have uh, the authority and the legislative competence uh, to legislate on something which strictly speaking is part of uh, the state list. So in, in, in that sort of situation, and what exactly is it that um, uh, these laws signify? What exactly is it that these laws um, are trying to change uh, and so on. So, th so there's a lot of back and forth which has been going on about it for the last almost two months. Um, for, for a government which is um, supposed to be more communicative as compared to uh, what, what at some point of time was referred to as a uh, Mauni Prime Minister in, in the past, in, in between 2004 and 2014. So Dr. Manmohan Singh was often referred to as uh, the mute Prime Minister, the Mauni Prime Minister. The Prime Minister doesn't talk. Uh, the Prime Minister is not very forthcoming. Uh, so as compared to that, since 2014, uh, Indians have been told that they've been living with the government, which has been very communicative and which has been very dynamic as far as um, the, the, the very act of communication between the rulers and the ruled is concerned. And strangely enough, for the last 60 days, uh, I, 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 when these protests have been going around uh, and these protesters had been stalled from getting into Delhi uh, at, at these various border crossings between um, Delhi and its uh, neighboring states. So you have the Tikri border, you have the Singhu border, you have the Ghazipur border uh, crossings wherein these people have been stopped. They have not been allowed to get into Delhi. 
um so and uh, you had this situation which had uh, developed wherein as as people saw it for themselves uh entire tent cities entire caravan cities cities uh, made of different types of vehicles by which these farmers were ferried to these places had sprung up and strangely enough uh, th th there was no communication there was just no communication so uh, the farmers who happened to be the most important stakeholders as far as these reforms are concerned uh, were never consulted uh, in, in uh, the formulation of these laws. Um, no one deemed it appropriate or right enough uh, to talk to their representatives, to talk to their organizations as these laws were being piloted through parliament. And after everything had happened, no one deemed it right enough to talk to these people when their lacks had gathered. They were mocked, um, they, they, they were um, criticized for the sort of things that they had been doing. Uh, aspersions were cast on their intentions, identities, as well as uh, the sort of interests which had propelled them uh, to, to, to the places that they found themselves in, in and around Delhi. Um, so we were told that uh, ev everyone from uh, extreme uh, left-wing organizations uh, to extreme uh, secessionists of the 1980s Khalistan variety uh, to, all, all, of course, the all-pervasive foreign hand. Uh, everyone, everyone had sort of developed an interest in these protests. Everyone had um, sort of instigated the farmers. The farmers have no brains of their own. Um, so it had, had, had these powers which had instigated them um, been somehow or the other minimized as far as their influence and as far as their working is concerned, Maybe the farmers and uh, the cause for which they had been agitating would just have had evaporated. That that was sort of the general impression which was created. Um, and and so uh, for for the last sixty days, the sort of things which had been happening. Incidentally, the last sixty days are also days where in North Indian plains temperatures um, start moving down, and th th this has definitely been a very severe winter. Uh, so, a, a very severe, very unremitting sort of winter uh, since early November itself has, has uh, stalked the North Indian Plains, where temperatures have gone really, really low. And it's in these very low temperatures that uh, th there is this uh, brilliant idea that has been doing the rounds, uh, that these people are here because they have been instigated, they have been provoked by political parties. Uh, no one ever understanding as to how does this work in the Indian context where uh, the relationship between political parties and folks like the ones that have gathered on the uh, borders of Delhi is an extremely tenuous one. So mo most of the time folks like that would mock political parties and politicians, would mock and uh, make, make great fun of people who are involved in active politics, even as, as, as far as their own villages are concerned or affiliated to party politics and stuff of that type. So in, in that sort of situation, one just doesn't know as to uh, what, what exactly was the government of India waiting for, for all these last six years. They, they just hope that uh, as, as the temperatures keep going low, as, as things start becoming very tough, uh, maybe these people would just evaporate. They, they just would uh, sort of sublimate and there would be no sign of all, all this agitation all across the place. Extremely low temperatures, almost 160 people who are dead by now um, on, on account of different so folks who have not been able to uh, withstand the extreme weather conditions, folks who have been desperate enough to go about uh, committing suicide. So all, all sorts of things which have happened, but 160 people who are dead. And um, in, in this entire period, um, conducted a protest which has more or less been seen by uh, many in the world as a textbook example of how a good protest should be done. Um, perfectly peaceful, marshalling its own resources, um, never giving up, traveling back and forth, um, mobilizing manpower on as big a scale as is possible, 
appearing as humble and communicative about the purposes which had brought them to this sort of a situation as is possible um striking out their own resources as far as media is concerned and that's that's exactly uh, what possibly riled most of the sections of the indian media yesterday so 26 january happens to be a big day as far as india is concerned um uh, started off in uh, 1929 uh when when uh, the law resolution was passed demanding purna swaraj and initially in 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 the days before 1947 it it was 26 january that was uh normally commemorated as what is called as independence day the day on which uh under the leadership of the indian national congress uh the people of india demanded complete independence from the crown complete severance of relationships with the crown and a country which would go absolutely free uh post independence given the fact that uh freedom came on the 15th of august 1947 uh 26 of january became the day on which in 1950 the republic was supposed to have had uh been established and had have had started its independent career uh so it it got marked as republic day uh and ever since 1950 it has been commemorated as republic day solemn occasion uh time for um the, the sort of grand parades that once upon a time one used to witness uh happening uh, along the walls of uh the kremlin uh in moscow uh when stalin was the ruler uh, so the october revolution parades uh seem to be the, uh, the the sort of template on which india's republic day parades were organized uh the soviet union disappeared most of the countries in eastern europe that used to mark uh the october revolution in a similar manner disappeared um so it's it's only uh, north korea china and india uh that are now left as a countries that go about putting up these types of parades the other two doing it occasionally so depending on what is the occasion for which uh, they would go about assembling people and military resources and and a show of uh, martial prowess uh, in the indian case uh, the annual timetable demands that this sort of a parade be held uh, on the 26th of january and so every year on the 26th of january it's held uh, it's it's quite a spectacle all by itself um uh, normally it is attended by uh, some foreign head of state or government in in front of whom uh, the entire march past happens um quite quite a um, sort of movement as far as the new government of new india is concerned since 2014 when um th- th- they had gone about marking uh, republic day once upon a time uh with all the 10 heads of state or government of the asean countries in attendance so in in earlier times the idea was there should be just one single head of state or government and the modi government just blew it off by saying that no but we are used uh, we, we are going to create our own new benchmarks and we are going to do uh this sort of spectacular diplomacy on a bigger scale so all all the asean heads of state and government invited so quite a panoply from that to the present when uh, the parade for 2021 happened to be the parade in which there was no head of state of government uh, uh state or government which was invited and which was official guest as far as this one was concerned um the british prime minister was supposed to attend but on account of uh, the rapidly deteriorating situation of the covid pandemic in britain decided to stay away from uh, these types of celebrations and festivities in india um and so there was there was no uh, foreign head of state or government that was uh, visible over there um now in hindsight it seems it was quite right and appropriate uh, because had the british prime minister been an official guest and um had he been with uh, the indian dignitaries participated in the parade and uh, taken in um the air of uh, this is entire show of military prowess cultural diversity and so on and so forth that uh, passes down rashpath uh while you had these incidences which were happening in and around the red fort and around the other places uh in delhi one just uh, can 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 stop thinking about this as to how would this have had panned up as to the house of commons is concerned 
and uh, with with uh, the Indian members of uh, both the Conservative as well as Labour as well as Liberal Party. Uh, and how, how exactly would they have it grilled the British Prime Minister after his going back home about his having had sat there while um, the, the sort of actions that took place in the other parts of the city were going on. So on, on that backdrop, it seems that uh, that Mr. Johnson did not attend this parade. Uh, possibly spared him some very uncomfortable questioning and given the last round of questioning which had happened around this protest in the British Parliament, it seems that um, some very uncomfortable questioning is what he would have had been subjected to and it was really good that um, he, he has been spared all that trouble and turmoil, um, especially with the sort of turmoil which is associated with Brexit, which is associated with the pandemic, which is associated with the way in which uh, the British government is conducting itself and so on and so forth. But that that's, that's a different matter altogether. Um, in, in India, uh, sections of India's television media were prompt to seize on the events um, that, that happened on the afternoon of the 26th of January um, to decry them as some sort of a massive insurrection. Um, so all, all manner of uh, words and descriptions uh, were thrown in to signify that uh, this was something that was violent, this was something that was uh, over the top, this was something that was um, seditious, insurrectionary uh, and very, very inappropriate and possibly completely illegitimate. Uh, especially given the fact that it took place on the 26th of January uh, 2021. So, uh, gi given the fact that the day carries a certain sort of somber significance to itself, um, the, the, day the, the day calls in for a certain sort of celebration of the national spirit. Uh, so, in that sort of a situation, uh, doing the sort of things that uh, they did, as, as far as the farmers are concerned, vandalizing public properties, uh, taking on the police, uh, ru running berserk all around the place, chasing uh, security forces uh, while, uh, while driving tractors and so on. So all, all, all in all, uh, the, the whole idea was uh, that, well, there's something that is happening over here that is absolutely wrong, absolutely inappropriate and doesn't behove of, of a day as somber as this. Um, and and of, of course, there was a certain um, raising of a certain sort of uh, patriotism. There, there was the fanning of a certain sort of uh, fire all across the place that, that um, they, they had done something that was deeply unpatriotic. Um, one doesn't think that one needs to go about justifying what was done by the farmers, uh, given the fact that it's almost 500 organizations from across the country that have uh, joined hands as far as this uh, movement itself, if that is uh, a right word that one can use for it, uh, is concerned. Uh, they're capable enough of advocating their cause, they're capable enough of justifying whatever they have uh, gone through, um, they're capable enough of uh, taking a stand and a position on whatever has happened. Uh, but nevertheless, one just feels that um, possibly the Indian media overdid it. Uh, given the fact that in January 2021, uh, just in the month of January 2021, ever since the new year has started, one has been witnessing these events and incidences which have been happening in Tunisia, uh, in all the major cities of Tunisia, in especially uh, parts of uh, the major cities which are dominated by working class neighborhoods and this uh, frequent run-ins between the police and youngsters. 2021 happens to be uh, a decade since the Arab Spring of uh, 2011 is concerned and uh, quite significant for a simple reason because the Arab Spring began in Tunisia wherein President Zainal Abidin Ben Ali was the first president to be toppled by the Arab Spring. Uh, and so a decade down the line when youngsters find that uh, things possibly have just not changed. Uh, they, they have just seemed to go 
more bad as compared to what they were in 2011 or possibly were just exactly where they were in 2011. So if one looks at those protests, if one looks at uh, that sort of a confrontation between the Tunisian security forces and youngsters in Tunisia, uh, one just doesn't think that what happened in Delhi on the 26th of January 2021 uh, can exactly be described in those types of calamitous terms that was described by the Indian media. Uh, if one looks at uh, the sort of confrontation which has been happening between the security forces and youngsters in Uganda on uh, the eve of uh, the January 2021 Ugandan presidential elections, if one is to look at the sort of troubles which had been marking countries in West Africa on the eve of presidential elections in Mali, on the eve of presidential elections in Kota de Vior, um, so one, one just doesn't think as to should this really be categorized in the way in which the Indian media categorized it. January 2021 marks some serious rioting in the Netherlands wherein uh, practically all the major cities have been closed. Uh, you, you have a huge round of vandalism which has been taking place, uh, quite prolific and uh, quite well recorded and documented by the people who are taking part in it, in opposition to these quarantine and curfew measures which are related to the COVID pandemic. Um, so if, if one is looking at the Netherlands, a country which is much more smaller in terms of population and hence, uh, violence of that type uh, automatically becomes uh, more intense activity in a society like that. Uh, if one is looking at, say, for example, the protests which are happening in Russia, in the different cities of Russia, uh, on account of um, the, the, the Russian judiciary deciding uh, to prosecute uh, 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 there's this strong opponent uh, of President Putin, uh, Mr. Navalny, uh, who had been poisoned, who had spent time in Berlin recovering and coming back. So if, if one is looking at uh, the post-Navalny protests in Russia, uh, much bitter winter conditions as compared to India because the temperatures have gone much below zero. Uh, as far as all the Russian cities are concerned, and from Siberia at one end to Moscow and Petersburg at the other end, practically the whole country has been roiled by these protests. So if one is looking at them, one just doesn't know as to can the Indian protests be really described in those types of terms? Uh, possibly not. Uh, if, if one is looking at, say, for example, January the 6th in Washington, D.C., and the events in connection with the rioting that happened in the Capitol, um, the, the way in which uh, members of Congress were threatened, uh, the, the uh, Vice President of the United States was threatened, the whole bureaucracy of the Congress was almost he held hostage. Um, one doesn't feel that what happened in Delhi can be described in exactly similar terms. So if one is looking at protests in different parts of the world which are going on as of now, one just doesn't understand as to was the Indian media overdoing it? Uh, and of course, they have a reason to overdo it because uh, most of them were royally shunned by uh, the protesting farmers. Uh, when, when uh, in the earlier part of the protest, um, these, these media houses went down to try and cover the protest, especially television media. And they, they were shunned by the protesters by saying that, uh, well, they've got nothing to tell them. They've got nothing to talk to them and they've got no, no way by which there can be a communication with them. Um, so it seemed that 26th of January presented uh, television media with its opportunity to get even with the protesters and uh, well they just didn't lose a chance to do so and so the sort of description which was made so the whole idea that uh, te television was right at the forefront of uh, this entire activity of trying to uh, raise the temperature in a certain way to insist on this that uh, well it seems that the protesters have lost all sort of uh, trust, all sort of sympathy uh, that public opinion in India had with them for all these last 60 days. 
one just doesn't understand as to how is that true and what exactly is the barometer of this public opinion. So is is the Indian television media taking to itself, arrogating to itself and speaking on behalf of itself enough to say that there has been a turn in public opinion in a country where practically almost 57-58% of people of 1.4 billion are involved in farming in some way or the other. A much larger section is in some form or the other associated with it. Uh, one just doesn't know as to what exactly was the media looking at when the media said, uh, insists on this that um, public opinion now seems to have a turned. So it seems that they have been busy building a narrative uh, all by themselves. Uh, which which would try to cast these events in a certain light uh, and which which would see to it that um, th th there can never be a return um, to, to a different sort of a perspective as far as all of this is concerned. So, uh, and op to make things worse, the net was down in so many places. Uh, to make things worse, um, so, so reporters who came along with the security forces and were uh, uh, recording from behind the security forces. Uh, well, their recording seems to be slightly different from the sort of recordings which have been made by uh, reporters, media persons, folks with cameras who were recording it from the side of the uh, protesting farmers. So if, if one takes that into consideration and the fact that uh, the single casualty which has been related to all of this has been a farmer. Uh, one just doesn't know as to how should one look at this whole way because the media has been trying to build a certain sort of a narrative around all of this. Um, but of course, if uh, as I said, if, if one is looking at uh, protests in uh, the United States on the 6th of January, if one is looking at the protests which are happening, uh, the demonstrations are going on in Netherlands, uh, in Russia, in Tunisia, in Uganda, in Iraq, uh, closer home in Nepal, uh, ever since Prime Minister Oli has uh, got parliament dissolved and has uh, decided to go in for new elections. So if one is looking at all of that, one just doesn't understand as to how can the Indian protests uh, be labelled in the sort of way in television media has gone about labelling them. Um, of course, seeing all of this, uh, as, as I already made my point about it, uh, one is definitely not condoning it. One is definitely not condoning um, anything. Uh, but uh, one just hopes that there is some sort of perspective that, that is brought to bear upon all of this. So for 60 days, if you have left folk out there in the cold in, in the way in which uh, they were for the last 60 days, and then you suddenly tell them that, uh, well, the borders would be opened and you would be let in and you can go about parading. And uh, obviously they jumped the gun. So they, they were supposed to start the parade after the Republic Day parade were, was over. Uh, but most of them got extremely impatient at all of this and decided to uh, get into the city much earlier. Uh, and obviously in a number of cases, uh, there were roadblocks and a number of cases uh, roads have just been blocked. Roads do get blocked in this manner in Delhi uh, on the occasion of Independence Day and Republic Day. Uh, and then when you have a security reason of the sort of uh, the one that existed yesterday in the form of the farmers parading on tractors through the city, um, roads definitely do get blocked. So there's no problem with that. Uh, but then for a number of farmers for whom this was like a big day all by itself, given the fact that for a long period of time, they were just not allowed into the city. And that's, 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 that's some of the other very bizarre. Um, even Putin did not stop the Russians uh, from, from uh, protesting in favor of Alexei Navalny. Uh, right under the Kremlin walls in the way in which they were protesting on uh, the last weekend. So one doesn't know where does this brilliant idea come from that uh, people who have been dissenting uh, in, in a certain peaceful legal and constitutional format um, should be kept away from the very seat of power from which uh, parliamentary democracy in this function, uh, in, in this country functions, uh, in the name of the same people, 
So the same people to whom uh, Mr. Modi had dedicated his government in 2014, the same people to whom he keeps on uh, at times very dramatically and theatrically insisting on that uh, he's the chief servant. Uh, one just doesn't know as to how should this uh, very Sanskritized Hindi word called a sevak uh, be translated. Is it slave? Is it servant? Is it servitor? Uh, what, what, what exactly are the connotations of this word? He has never gone about making that clear. So uh, all in all, when he says that he's at the service of the people, uh, thereby making it seem that the people are his masters. So when a section of uh, the people in that large numbers and most of whom possibly had voted for him in 2014 and 2019 uh, do uh, come demanding a certain hearing uh, about their cause, do come demanding a certain sort of airing of their grievances and are told that um, no, they can't enter the seat of power. So all, all, all that um, uh, Crass, it, it sounds so crass, this whole idea of uh, Pradhan Sevak and this whole idea of uh, I dedicate my government to farmers. But it, it sounds so crass now. So if, 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 if you just can't have time for folks who matter, if you just can't um, use your eloquence in terms of uh, communicating to them the reasons why you have gone about doing whatever you have done, and hearing about uh, their reasons about why they're doing whatever they have done. If one doesn't understand as to how does a political democracy function, if, if communication between the rulers and the ruled collapses. So if, if one witnesses this strange sort of a situation that, uh, that, that one has been witnessing as far as these protests are concerned, that just comes crashing down. One just doesn't understand as to how does this whole thing go on. And for what purposes and towards what ends does it go on? Um, so, it, it, obviously, it seems that um, should it be labeled in the sort of terms that the Indian media is labeling? If, if, if one looks, as I said, at Tunisia, at Uganda, at Nepal, at South Africa, at uh, the United States, at Russia, um, at Iraq, at um, the West African countries, uh, things which are happening in uh, Israel, say, for example, around uh, Netanyahu's handling of the COVID crisis. So if one, if one looks at uh, these, these multiple uh, events of protest all across the place, one feels that what, what happened at Delhi was um, not something as um, insurrectionary as the Indian media makes it seem to be. It, it's some sort of uncalled for rowdism uh, perpetrated by uh, hooligans, uncontrolled hooligans who have gone berserk, uh, who, who are more drawn in by the lure of uh, vlogging, by the lure of uh, posting, by the lure of uh, making videos and uh, posting them on social media. So it, it, it just seems it's the act of such types of people. Um, and this, this is not unusual, especially coming uh, for for uh, most of the time, the, 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 most, the strongest support as far as these protests have been concerned were provided by the Punjab farmers, by, by people coming from the Punjab. And if one knows the way in which uh, popular culture in Punjab has evolved in the last 20 odd years around this whole phenomena of uh, making cassettes, uh, loud, ludicrous, loud, ludicrous, lewd cassettes um, in terms of um, senseless lyrics, uh, mindless uh, gun waving. Um, so it's it's not and 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 and, and this whole show of um, machismo of of a certain sort of a projection of masculinity. Uh, one just doesn't know as to if one is looking at all of that and if one is looking at uh, the sort of events that happened yesterday, especially in uh, cases wherein it just went bursa. It feels it's, it's that sort of rowdism uh, which one is uh, getting to see. So a certain sort of rowdism um, that, that, that feels proud about uh, projecting a certain idea of being male is, is what was more on display as compared to anything else. If, if one has got to talk of uh, violence and protests, 
of of a certain type uh, that that the end media was talking about one just needs to look at these different uh, points of flare up between governments and the government in so many other parts of the world to realize that possibly what happened in india just it, it's it's just for the fact that it happened on a certain day that possibly uh, the sort of la- labeling that the indian television media has done is is going to stick around for quite some period of time to come had it not been for the significance of the day it it possibly is not uh, uh, something other than rowdism um just in the passing to make a small point um sub january 2020 just exactly one year ago um delhi witnessed the shine back protests uh, around the canrc uh, embroglio uh, conducted by uh, muslim women and there was quite a hue and cry around that and when when one is looking around uh, at at the events of january 2021 and one is when one is looking back at the events of january 2020 one one the one thing that stands out stark as far as spectacle in both the cases is concerned is the gender aspect of it so january 2020 was more about women not that there were not men around there were uh, but but um uh, the, the spectacle part of the entire thing was more focused on women middle aged women old women uh young women so all all sorts of women and then when one is looking at january 2021 you have um not that in this one you didn't have women there were women uh, but what stands out as far as the spectacle is concerned is men men in colorful turbans men uh, all all dressed up to go somewhere uh, men who are proud men who are um strutting around for a certain cause and a certain purpose uh, men who it seems are projecting a certain idea of masculinity so and so shinebag was something that was um, more subdued so if one remembers uh, 26th of january 2020 and one remember if one is trying to place it in the context of uh, 26th of january 2021 um the shinebag republic day was much much different much impossibly different um there was there was rohit vemula's mother uh most of these other women uh, there there was this whole symbolism around the national flag the national constitution the national anthem uh and then one one is looking at this uh there's a certain element of uh folksiness to it uh 2021 so there is uh the sort of punjabi music that one gets to hear at uh the different dhabas all across the place uh there is a certain sort of conscious effort to uh, it, it seems they were most of the time trying to learn things along the way in the way in which they should be conducting themselves communicating uh projecting putting themselves out um so one just doesn't know as to is is gender the thing uh because at the end of the day that was about muslim women this was about sikh men uh so how, how does one exactly sum all of this up in terms of uh what's what's exactly the sort of spectacle that it goes about creating uh but one definitely feels that the sort of terminology which the media has used to describe it is certainly out of place it it just seems that a media that has been sar as far as its experience in terms of communicating with the protesters in the early phase of the protesters concerned was sort of trying to get e- even with them and to a certain extent at least as of now on the 27th of january 2021 it seems they have largely succeeded thank you